of Moringa oleifera. It is also known as drumstick tree, Moringa, Moringa horseradish tree, Ben oil tree, and Ben's olive tree, known for its oil from its seed. It is in the Moringaceae family. Moringa oleifera is a fast-growing drought-resistant tree native to India and found in Africa. It is cultivated for its young seeds, seed pods, and leaves used as vegetables and traditional herbal medicine or for water purification. It has been listed as an invasive species but not in the way of invading intact habitats or displacing native flora. Rather, it is not easy to kill. If it is chopped, it can regrow. A huge tree stump or branch can be replanted with great success. However, it isn't invasive as, as in the way of spreading. Um, so, Moringa oleifera is a fast-growing deciduous tree that may reach 32 to 40 feet tall with a trunk diameter of one and a half feet wide. The bark is a grayish white color with a thick cork. The trunk has an open crown of drooping thin branches, leaves, and appear clustered like a feather. So as you can see, it, it kind of droops down and it's kind of like a, a feather. And um, another way to prevent it from spreading is to um, collect the seed pods before they drop. So here it's growing new branches. That's where I've been harvesting um, some of the leaves for my teas. So the flowers are hermaphroditic with yellow and white petals. Flowering occurs six months after planting. The fruit appears as a hanging seed pod, much like a bean, but three-sided with dark brown seeds inside. The seeds have three papery wings and are dispersed by wind and water. It is often cut back annually to three to six feet and allowed to grow so the pods and leaves may be reached for harvesting. Its species name is Latin oleum for oil and ferre to bear so it bears oil in its seed. Moringa is grown in semi-arid and tropical and subtropical areas of the U.S. in zones 9 and 10. Able to grow in various soil conditions but preferring neutral and slightly acidic well-draining soil in pH 6.3 to 7. So it does prefer the hot climates and it's perfect to grow here. <clears throat> and it makes sense that it grows in Africa and India. If water logged, the roots may rot, as in the winter it almost died off, and, um, and it's not very, very cold frost tolerant. So how I saved it was it had grown about this high the first year, and um, I grew it about two years ago, uh, right when I started mulching everything. And um, the first year I didn't know much about it, so it almost died from the frost of that year, and the last two years have had quite a bit of rain. And um, this past year I collected tons of leaves and I put the leaves in the pot and I made basically a little barrier so it protected the roots from um, freezing over. It did get a lot of rain and that mulch did keep the moisture in there. But luckily the plant was a little higher up in this pot and so and it's well draining. So it came back. Um, if so this is a sun and heat loving plant and doesn't tolerate freezing or frost. This plant was grown two years ago but died back twice. 
so it's still about the same height it was the second the first year and it says it's low growing initially and later on it will grow much faster it would have died had I not placed the mulch in the pot to overwinter it and protect the roots so India is the largest moringa producer in the Philippines and Indonesia it is grown for its leaves which are used for food it's grown in the wild in Central America Caribbean, South America, Africa, and South and Southeast Asia, and now Hawaii. Moringa may be propagated from seed or cuttings. Direct seeding is possible because the germination rate is high. Moringa seeds can be germinated year-round in well-draining soil. For vegetative propagation, cuttings must be 1 meter long and 4, meter, 4 centimeters in diameter at least. India has the largest variety of Moringa, probably since it er originated from there. It is cultivated for dwarf varieties in India with high seed pod production, whereas in Tanzania it is cultivated for higher oil content. In Pakistan it is grown for its leaves and grown as a perennial, while in India it is grown as an annual in shallow soil. All parts of the Moringa are said to be edible, and it is grown for various parts, such as leaves, pods, and seeds, for oil and water purification. The yields from the Moringa vary depending on the season, variety, fertilization, and irrigation. It grows best in warm, dry conditions with a bit of fertilizer and irrigation. Pollarding, coppicing, Lopping or pruning are methods to promote branching, increasing production, and facilitating harvesting. The oil from the seed is used as a food supplement in cosmetics and for hair and skin. Its leaves can be used in juicing or smoothies or eaten cooked. As far as pests and diseases go, it is not really affected by serious diseases if it is grown in small numbers. Um, like not in a farm, but just one one here and there. In India, there are six, several caterpillars and worms that feast on the foliage and bark. Aphids, stem borers, and fruit flies may damage it. Sometimes termites may cause minor damage. The moringa tree is a host to powdery mildew that damages papaya crops in India. Keep these plants apart if it is a concern. It is a very nutritionally dense plant that's very high in protein, among other vitamins and minerals. It leaves, it, the leaves are the most nutritious part, providing B vitamins, vitamin C, pro-vitamin A, bake in the form of beta carotene, vitamin K, manganese, and protein. A small proportion of the calcium in the leaves is bound in crystals of calcium oxalate. Uh, a small portion compared to spinach. The immature seed pods or drumsticks are cooked in a curry until soft and still retaining vitamin C will provide dietary fiber, potassium, magnesium, and manganese. Seeds are eaten like peas or roasted like nuts and contain vitamin C and B vitamins and minerals. The seed oil, also known as ben oil, is high in behenic acid the refined oils oil is clear, odorless, and resists rancidity. The seed cake remaining after oil extraction can be used as a fertilizer or flocculant to purify water. It may be used as a biofuel potentially in a raw press using no heat. The roots are pressed and used as a condiment with sharp flavor from the high polyphenol content. It is very useful for malnutrition relief. Moringa trees have been used to combat malnutrition in infants and nursing mothers. Moringa thrives in arid environments so it may provide nutrition, nutritious food throughout the year. Moringa leaves have been proposed as an iron-rich food source. Moringa leaf powder is used as a dietary supplement. For traditional medicine and research, the bark, sap, 
roots, leaves, and seeds and flowers are used in traditional medicine. Research has examined how it may affect blood lipid profiles and insulin secretion. Extracts from leaves contain polyphenols under research to determine their effects in humans. Toxicity data is limited but indicate certain compounds in the bark and root may cause adverse effects. Supplements are potentially toxic at levels exceeding 3,000 mg per kilogram body weight, but safe below 1,000 mg per kilogram. That's in the form of supplements. But if you take a fresh plant like this, it shouldn't um, cause any harm because it doesn't get to that extent, um, that concentration. And it is not advisable to use Moringa while pregnant, and it may interfere with prescription drugs. And according to Wikipedia, other uses for it is that in developing countries, Moringa has potential for use in nutrition, boosting food security, fostering rural development, foraging for livestock, and supporting sustainable land care. Moringa leaf powder was as effective as soap for hand washing as it has antiseptic and detergent properties from phytochemicals in the leaves, and the press cake can be implemented in wastewater treatment. Um, it is also a great nitrogen fixer for chop and drop in a permaculture garden. So not only can you eat it, but you can use its foliage. It constantly pulls up nitrogen and you can use its foliage for chop and drop to feed your other plants or to make weed tea rich in nitrogen. And at this point, I would like to note that, um, you should see the YouTube video called Moringa, the Miracle Tree because it's chock full of information regarding Moringa and this, um, all its benefits. And according to Healthline, there are six science-based benefits of Moringa. Moringa is rich in antioxidants and bioactive plant compounds. It has been used for thousands of years in India. Moringa is very nutritious. Its leaves are an excellent source of vitamins and minerals. One cup of freshly chopped leaves has two grams of protein, B6 vitamin B, vitamin C, iron, riboflavin, and vitamin A. In the West, dried leaves are sold as dietary supplements in the form of capsules or powder. The pods are not as high in nutritional content, but are extremely high in vitamin C. The negative side to Moringa leaves is that it may contain high levels of anti-nutrients, which may reduce absorption of minerals and protein. The amounts of nutrients in capsule form won't supply as much nutrition compared to a balanced whole food diet. Moringa is rich in anti antioxidants. In addition to vitamin C and beta carotene, Moringa provides quercetin, an antioxidant that may help lower blood pressure, and chlorogenic acid, also found in high amounts in coffee helps to moderate blood sugar levels after meals. One study showed that taking one and a half teaspoons of Moringa powder every day for three months increased blood anti antioxidant levels significantly. Antioxidants fight free radicals that cause oxidative stress associated with chronic diseases and type two diabetes and heart disease. You may read the article in Health, Healthline about all its benefits. Uh, Moringa may lower blood sugar levels. It may reduce inflammation, and it may lower cholesterol that leads to, high, to heart disease. And it may protect against arsenic toxicity. Four benefits for men are promoting prostate health, alleviating erectile dysfunction, improving fertility, and improving blood sugar control. So look into Healthline to see its benefits and research Moringa more, but that documentary on Moringa on YouTube is really all-inclusive. Thank you for watching and hope you grow this and or at least give it a try. 
and please like and subscribe and share my videos if you like my content and if you like me to continue making more videos from here on out. Have a great day.